So let's have a talk here about uh, tune materials. As you can see, I've given myself a very simple model here. And let's start with applying a cell edges material. Now the cell edges material comes installed with every copy of Modo. So all the, thing all the things I'm gonna show you here can be done with the standard vanilla install of Modo. You don't need NPR or any of those extra kits. So the first thing I've just installed is the cell edges. As you can see, it has done its job. Um, I will come back to this one in a minute, but let's just look at the next thing that I want to do. It was just to look at the fill color. Uh, the edges, the cell edges clearly take care of the edges. The fill color has to come from the material. In order to do that, the first thing I want to do is set the diffuse amount to zero, the specular amount to zero, Fresnel to zero, set everything to zero, and then go into the luminous intensity and set it to one. Now as soon as I do that, you can see that, that we're sort of getting somewhere. You get a flat color, but it's not completely working yet because you can see that the top of the cylinder here is a bit grayish. It's not as wide as the, the side of the cylinder. And that's got to do with the cell edges material, which has got this setting here, incidence edges. If you set this to zero, everything becomes much uh, cleaner. Um, what you can do now is to make this more reusable, this, this whole setup, is to add a group. And let's just call this um, Dune Material. And drag both these uh, materials in there. And now what we can do is we can expose some of these um, materials uh, properties to the two material group. So I'll show you how to do that. One thing I want to expose to the group is the edge width. Just, just right click on it and say expose as user channel on group. I will do the same thing with the material here, the luminant, luminous material, and just click on the luminous color, uh, right click on it, and it's out of frame, but again, I'm just clicking on the expose as user channel on group. Now, if I close the tool material, lock preset, um, you can see here that on the user channels, the edge width and the luminous color are now there as settings that you can just play with. Same for the edge width, let's just make the edge a bit thicker, a bit thinner, and so on. So essentially this now becomes a material that you, uh, sort of a um, self-made material that you can uh, reuse. Of course what you can do now is of course save it as a preset. But before we do that, there's maybe one more thing we want to do. I just let me unlock the, unlock the preset for that and I'll actually have to go under the setup tab to show you what I'm about to do because what we want to do now is we want to make um, sure that the quality settings, the render quality settings for the edge are set automatically that's another thing that um, we wanted to look at so the way that works is we've got the edge quality here in the cell edges. Now let me just quickly do a test render here and I'll show you what I'm trying to get at here. If I render this out with a edge with a four pixels, because this is measured in pixels, okay we're nearly there, right so I've set this now no to 100%. You can see this um, gives us a very clean and crisp line. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm perfectly happy with this. But look what happens when we set it to one pixel. First of all, it will render much faster. But if you look at it at 200%, you can start to see that the, the line isn't quite as clean as it could be. Um, it may not bother you too much right now, but if you were to animate this, this really would start to fizz this line. So we need to increase the quality of this line. And you do this in here 
and sell edges uh, properties with something called edge quality now because I have been working with animation and, and uh, line quality is actually more uh, important when you're doing animation like I said lines can start to fizz if you don't uh, render more than high enough quality I found that anything um, up to one pixel and less needs to have an edge quality of 64 so let me, let me do another test render so it renders a bit slower but not dramatically so nearly there and there we are let's look at 200 percent now that's, that's a much cleaner line as you can see compared to the previous one which was starting to break up was starting to go all gray and get lost that's a sort of nice and crisp line i'm looking for now um, essentially the edge width and edge quality sort of want to be linked a thin line wants to have a high edge quality a thicker line can get away with a much lower quality setting so what I can do is I can drag both these channels into the schematic let me just separate oops no that's not what I want to do separate this channel this is really just to make your life a bit easier easier so because we're gonna have a link between this and this one having this one separate just makes it visually a bit much easier but you don't have to do that so we want the edge width to drive the edge quality but the relationship between these two is not going to be linear so what we want to use here is a channel relationship let me just link that one up here we are and here we are and let me just bring up the preview render here yeah right so right now we've got an edge width of probably yeah nothing we, we have got an edge quality oh sorry an edge quality setting I mean of, of zero which, which will be not good enough um, I know in fact that if I go into the graph here um, and we'll, we look at an edge width of one we want to have a quality setting of 64 and when I have got an edge width of say don't know 3 oop, sorry 3 inputs a value of 3 I want to have an edge quality of say 4 so now if I look at the curve that I ended up with this is what we get so a line like line thickness of one gives us a very high render quality setting of three gives us lower quality setting I know from experience that the curve wants to have a shape like this so uh, I'm gonna leave it at that now what you should be doing right now is do a bunch of render tests where you just render out all these different sort of line thicknesses oh yeah here we are so you want to render it out at different line thicknesses and see if the quality comes out looking good uh, I'm not gonna bother with that but it's just a principle you can sort of see how it works um, what I can do now of course is save the student material as a preset save preset and I've already done one on the uh, previously it looks like it so I can override that one do material 2 okay I'll make a new one then right so I've got myself now a material that that you can set the edge width, uh, edge width for and the luminous color and it also will set its own internal render quality setting for the edge width for the edge I mean edge quality so the next thing we want to look at is how um, this line thickness is influenced by the proximity of the camera and 
for that in fact let me just get that there we are so what we've got now is the group the two material group is controlling the edge width of the material within and through this relationship in turn that it controls edge quality so that's really just what we're looking at here no I want to have something that controls that edge width which is of course the distance between the camera and the item so as the item comes closer to the camera let me just see here Oop, a bit much but as you can see if, if it's this close you probably won't have a thicker line let's see maybe about four pixels uh, let's make it three pixels okay so when it's this close I want to see a three pixel line when it's further away though that three pixel line starts to get a little bit too too thick for my liking so at this point I want it to be one pixel yeah I can live with that right so let me just move this preview out of the way a little bit and let's grab these two items here drag them into the schematic and I've given myself a shortcut here at world positions because you use them all the time I found um, and let's add a measure distance node so this will give us a measurement oops this will measure the distance between these two items like so and again the idea is now that we're going to drive these two materials edge width with uh, the distance again I'm going to use a channel relationship So let's get started. When it's this close, I want to see an edge width of three. Did I say? Yeah, three. Just by clicking on this little thing, this little square, uh, you create a keyframe. And I will do the same thing for it when it's further away from the camera by zooming out. I want to see a one pixel line here again create a key let's bring up the graph okay it's a bit flat let's just zoom it in yeah what's, what's going on here oh oh I see right okay let's get rid of this key now I know from experiments in the past that this curve wants to look something like this um, so that the uh, so you get a very natural thinning of the line as the item goes further away from the camera again you probably have to do a few test renders where you animate the item away from the camera to see if this curve is the right curve but anyway as I now zoom in you can sort of see that gradually the line gets a little bit thicker and we know that this line is controlling its own render quality so we also know the render quality is constantly the right quality uh, the, at the right setting so there you have it it's a very simple version of the of what I did for real I mean there's, there's actually in reality much more going on in the the rigs that I did for Mr. Bean but this is a very simplistic version and it's, it sort of hopefully explains to you the principles that I've been using